every dog was created for a specific purpose. The pit bull was created to be the best fighting dog ever created. Old time pit bull breeders in the, around the turn of the century, if a pit bull showed man aggressive, they curled the dog. They killed the dog off because they didn't want that in their line. This is not a dog that was created to be aggressive towards people. And so, the love that it has for people is unparalleled. There's a lot of hard work goes into making one of these guys bad. If you have an owner that wants to use the dog as a weapon, the dog itself can be used as a weapon. I don't apologize for having a politically incorrect dog. You know, it's a dog. It's going to act like a dog. It's not going to be a monster if you don't allow it to be a monster. Bad people make bad dogs regardless of breed. And these guys have got a bad rap because a lot of bad people like them. People come to dog shows to collect points that are awarded in titles on their dogs, and they want to prove that their dog has got what it takes to be All-American. One more and he gets his Spartan Dog title, something you get when you champion out in all four events. Well, sadly enough, the American Pit Bull Terrier is being eliminated from a lot of different countries, and it's, it's a crying shame. That was the first dog that ever lived in our White House, and we're going to keep it alive. Jefferson had it. Jefferson had two of them. He was the first one to live in the White House. They get a bad rap on TV, uh, it's terrible, because with the number of dogs that we have out here registered, there should be hits all the time, according to the news, and there's not. There was a mauling in Denver where a pit bull attacked a child and it died. After several years of litigation, Denver won the right to ban pit bulls. In San Francisco just recently, a baby was mauled, and within a few weeks, the local legislator came up with legislation to ban pit bulls. And now California is trying to figure out what to do with this pit bull problem. It's not the dog's fault. It's the person who bred the dog to be that way. But they are dangerous in that regard. A pit bull jaw does have approximately 3,000 pounds per square inch of power, whereas the strongest other breed, like a Rottweiler, is about 1,000 pounds per square inch. The dog is what he is. They can't pretend to be something that they're not. If the food is good, they eat it. If it's not, they stay away from it. If they're interested in something, they go forward. If they're afraid, they go away. We look at the way nature has designed them, and we respect that. Well, we must respect what nature has done with the bully breeds also. Our duty is, if we're going to have them, to understand the way their mind works. Nature has wired the dog to live a life that's based on hierarchy, not on a life that's based on equality. The mentality of wolves is where it comes from. Because dogs are really wolves in dogs' clothing. They have a pack mentality. This is what has kept them alive for this period of time. Dogs that come to me are generally what we consider to be the bully breeds or the man stoppers. Man stoppers, meaning German Shepherds, Doberman Pinschers, Rottweilers, these are the dogs that are generally used for personal protection dogs. And that's why we call them man stoppers. And then we have the bully breeds, which can be the American Bulldog, the Bulldog, the Pit Bull, the American Staffordshire, and so forth. We call these the bully breeds for a reason, because generally they are bullies of other dogs. Every dog was created for a specific purpose. The pit bull, because it was not created to be a pack animal or a man stopper, it was not made to be aggressive towards humans. Pit bulls were created to be aggressive towards other animals. So then the question comes, then why are we having so many pit bull attacks? Why are pit bulls attacking people? Well. This is a dog that you have to make aggressive towards people. Because humans are used to personal protection dogs, they take a dog that is so beautiful, so menacing looking, they clip the ears to make it look more so, and they beef him up to make him look more dramatic, 
And then they teach him to be aggressive towards people. With the pit bulls, there was a time that you can jump into a backyard, and I don't care what age the pit bull was, you can just pick him up and take him. That's how docile he was towards humans. But now, the new age, changing the reason that this dog was created, this is why we're having a big problem in the world with dog bite. It's the people. This breed is probably no more a victim of the violence that it goes on with pit bulls than the pit bulls themselves. It's actually part of some gang's initiation rites to just beat up a pit bull. Pit bulls have a unique problem in the way that they've been bred in the last 400 years. Human beings started using animals to fight each other. Dog fighting it grew out of contests that were held in Old England between dogs and other animals. And when those were outlawed in 1835, fights between dogs as opposed to between dogs and a bear became more popular. It's not normal that any dog fight its own kind to the death. That's abnormal in an evolutionary sense. That's anti-survival as far as the species is concerned. Pit bulls have been bastardized in the sense that they've taken that survival skill of the dog to show submission and thrown it out the window. I mean, if a pit bull shows a sign of submission, the other dog's going to kill it. And I think that leads the dog to fight to the point that it's beyond exhaustion, to accept injuries that other dogs would never submit to. So to breed that out of the dog is totally against nature. In the old days, we rarely heard about one of these dogs of this breed biting a person. And that was because the last thing you want when you've got two dogs in an arena is one of the dogs going after the handler or the referee, who are also in the same arena. These guys get right down up close with dogs where they, they can actually talk to them while they're involved in the fight. Oh yeah, make him cry, boy. Make him cry. So a dog that would you know, possibly turn and bite your face was not going to be tolerated. But you can't have it both ways forever. In the cases where we've had terrible maulings or dog bite related fatalities, the highest percentage tends to be pit bulls or pit bull type dogs that have some fighting background. It's not the dog's fault, it's the person who bred the dog to be that way and conditioning it to be that way. I really worry about that kind of person being in society because there are clear connections between animal cruelty and abuse of people. We've tried to categorize dogfighters at the various levels. At the lowest end, but at the most prevalent end, is what we refer to as street level. Gang affiliated, there's a lot of that going on. Unfortunately, at these levels also, we tend to see dogs that are considered highly disposable. They can be had cheaply. And when you walk into an animal shelter these days and you see 50, 60 percent being pit bulls, many with scars, open wounds, those are the dogs that are coming from that environment. But at the very top end of that uh, would be professional fighters who have yards of dogs frequently anywhere from half a dozen to more than 60 dogs on a yard. Dog fighting itself has just become more sophisticated. Today we see dog fighters setting up contracts online. They're pretty bold about the kinds of adjectives that they'll use in describing the dog. Athletic, the way we like them, all of those are very thinly veiled attempts to let potential buyers know that these dogs are intended as something more than a family pet. Fighting dogs are kept at the end of a chain which is attached to a car axle stuck in the ground. And the dog spends most of its life walking around with the chain wearing down all the vegetation there. So very easy to spot from the air. The fights that they're involved with involve other nationally known figures. They're typically involved in high stakes, tens of thousands at the low end, hundreds of thousands into the high end. It's funny because when you go on a raid in one of these things, the dogs that you encounter on these fighting yards are wagging their tails and they're bouncing up and down and you know three feet off the ground with 30 40 pounds of chain and they're all excited to see you and for the most part they're not going to bite any of the police officers i've never seen that happen well i think the dogs are really just happy for the attention because if you look at the dog's whole life 
And he's got his three inch collar and his 40 pounds of, of logging chain. And that, for the most part, is how that dog is going to spend the rest of his life. It's not a life. It's not the kind of a life that you would wish on anybody. Do we make heroic efforts for an individual fighting dog who's had a terrible life up to that point? We want to be able to say, we saved these dogs and we're going to turn them around. And, and that's human nature. You can't do it. It's just not a happy ending. This is a situation where nobody can guarantee that one of those dogs will never come back and bite somebody. And if they do, every agency associated with that event is going to be sued. We live in that kind of society. You know, the kindest thing that we have to do in these situations is put them down and condemn the person that caused this. Make sure they're serving a real bit of prison time. That's the only way we're going to stop this stuff from happening. Do they bite? Yes. Do they show aggression to people and other dogs? Yes. Have they maimed and killed other people? Yes. But so have many other dogs. Dogs that have been created to do that specific thing. Animal aggression and people aggression are two different things and they generally don't mesh together. You usually have one or the other, particularly in this breed. And it's generally geared towards other animals. But if a pit bull dog brings hey. aggression, it's fast, it's quick, it's violent, it's all of those things. Wow. Is it controllable? Absolutely. But the training, the control that you instill in that is your brakes. Unfortunately, a lot of the pit bulls out there today, they're really fast cars. They're big SUVs, but they have no brakes at all. They have a lot of go, and a lot of power, and they can go over anything. They can mow it down, but they just don't have the brakes. Obviously, pit bulls have been an issue in this community and in most communities throughout this country. I don't want to vilify these animals. I'm not saying the breed is vicious and dangerous by nature or by genetics, but we all do agree that they have the physiological strength, if they are aggressive, that they can cause serious injuries and death. Put yourself in my shoes. We had a 12-year-old boy being killed. 60 to 65 percent of the dogs in my facility are pits or pit mixes. Almost 70 percent of the vicious and dangerous dogs are pit bulls. Of all the dogs in the city and county of San Francisco, pit bulls and pit bull mixes are the only adoptable dogs still being euthanized. I have people who say, you ban this breed from your town, they're nothing but killers. The other side saying, it's not the dog's fault, it's the owner's fault. What am I to do except say, yes, right now I have a problem with pit bulls. Yes, I'm saying pit bulls, and I'm sorry that that might hurt the breed in any way. I have too many pit bulls that are being bred by irresponsible owners to be aggressive. We want to stop the breeding of these animals. If you own a pit bull in the city and county of San Francisco, then it must be spayed or neutered. We're just overloaded with the breed. The statistics of dog attacks reflect the popularity of the breed at the time. And right now, it is a, of crisis proportion. How many pit bulls we have? People don't realize that chihuahuas bite more people than any other breed. The top three are dachshunds, chihuahuas, and cocker spaniels. Pit bulls account for a very, very small number of serious attacks over the country. And if you look behind the facts, most of the injuries that people have suffered from pit bulls are from breaking up a fight between a pit bull and another dog. The Dobie was the bad dog in the 60s. Right. The German Shepherd was the bad dog in the 70s. Roddy's was the bad dog in the 80s. And pit bulls became the bad dog in the 90s. What made a difference? You got idiots who don't know jack about these dogs, got them in their hand and saying, I'm a breeder, I'm this and I'm that, and they ain't nothing. That's right. The primary bulls are getting a bad name is because of breeders. Five years ago, there may have been a hundred pit bull breeders in California. Currently at this time, probably 10,000. There's no sanctioning authorities on dog breeders. So anybody could just buy two dogs and subsequently start breeding. It ultimately leads to all of the problems that we have. If we don't take responsibility for the breeding of the animals and somehow curb just the vast numbers of dogs that are being put out on the street, 
the breed will be banned and ultimately taken out of society. What I would like to see is a qualification for a breeder that can say that this person has understanding of vet medicine, breeding, nutrition, behaviors, and they've taken a course, they've passed it, and now this person is a professional, just like you could say someone is a professional in another area. I've been breeding for 25 years at this point. This is solely what I do. I'm a breeder of the American Pit Bull Terrier. Now, do I recommend that just anybody off the street has a pit bull? No, I don't. Do I believe that pit bulls are vicious animals? I do not believe pit bulls are vicious. I think they have a capability because of their makeup to do damage when in the wrong hands. They'll do just about anything you want them to do. And so if you put that in the wrong hands, then we have a problem. People need to step up and just do things right, especially if you're going to have this type of dog. The breeds are wonderful. That's why they're here. So many people are attracted to them for one reason or another. They're some of the most intelligent, responsible people that have these breeds. will stand up and say, that's not my dog they're talking about. Why should my dog be destroyed? I hate hearing someone's down this breed of dog. Your pit bull is, is one of the most loyal dogs out there, family dogs out there that you can find. But then at the same time, any dog can pretty much be that way as long as you socialize it the right way. That's my boy Adam Bomb right here. AB. Beautiful dog. He, he distills all the myths that people get with this breed, you know. This dog been really over here in the States has been got a bad bad rep because of uh, people are irresponsible and not taking care of their dogs and socializing them the right way. You can kind of say it's a testosterone thing, you know, to have a big dog with a big chest. You know, when I first got into these dogs, I understood. When you have a dog that you just keep locked up in the back, and all of a sudden, you know, the dog gets out, you got a loose cannon on your hand because socialization is the key by far. And that's why I stay under the toolage of, you know, Ray Certified and Larry Hill. They give me so much information. I, I've been training with Larry Hills for about five years. Do I call myself a trainer? No. I cannot call myself a trainer because I cannot read a dog like Larry Hill can read a dog. A pit bull to me is very strong, powerful, but at the same time very compassionate and soft. He'll be what you want him to be, but with the proper instruction, with the proper venues for the dog to get out and display his talents, to get out and show what he can do, he's a wonderful dog. I'd say now I've got 30 years in different aspects of training. Most of my experiences in the trainings as an adult okay, has been with the larger breed dog, the Rottweiler, the Pit Bull. Dogs don't understand vague commands. They understand explicit. Sit, stay, down, in, up, out, over, through. The way I work is that you bring the dog to me and then I give you the instruction on how to handle the dog from the basic obedience to the advanced obedience, which is our personal protection work. But just to train one and hand it over to somebody, that's an accident waiting to happen. Here you come. Here you come. boy. He coming. Good, good, good. Yes, yes. I'm looked at as an outlaw just like the dog is. Somebody see a, a, a pit bull and from the outside looking in, they stray away from it. And you know, it's the same way with me growing up where I grew up around. You know, people see you and it's a stereotype automatically. So with the dog, you know, we walk the same line. A decoy, you know, it's almost like an actor because you have to present the scenario to the dog. Whether I'm being in the crook or I'm trespassing, you know, I have to present it to the dog and be, make it be believable. So when it happens in real life, you'll know how to react to the scenario. And when the dog has game, it's like he always wants to participate in the game. A pit bull, he's real social, fearless, always up for a challenge, he's versatile too. Pit bull, I think, I'm confident, I can say he can do any job out there. Look at the job we do with him. God created every creature, every entity, everything that's here. Somewhere along in scripture, I read once, it says that you shouldn't add anything, nor should you take anything away. This animal 
is not detrimental to society. Society is detrimental to this animal. This is really a great day whose time has come to spay and neuter the pet. 75% of bites are caused by unneutered male dogs. This is a way to help reduce that. It is a win-win situation for everyone involved, the animals, and also for responsible professional breeders. When, when do I have to spay or neuter the dog? The ordinance requires that the dog be spayed or neutered at the age of four months. We have our dogs spayed and neutered except for the ones that we use for competition and I will not have any of my dogs spayed or neutered at four months of age. There are reasonable exceptions in this ordinance to allow people who breed and show as long as it's purebred and registered, they would then have the option of joining a dog breed club. To date, no list of approved clubs has been defined or named, yet compliance in this law requires membership in an approved club. Please do not let breed club politics set the law of the land, and that is what this ordinance is doing. Ow! My wife and I have owned, bred, and raised pit bull terriers for over 25 years. Now you're considering mandatory spaying and neutering, but this is aimed at American pit bull terriers because of the negative media attention they get and the actions of irresponsible owners which brand them all as dangerous. You know, it just it needs to be fair across the board, and I hear plenty of pit bull today, and we're responsible owners also, and we shouldn't be penalized. I think it was so racially motivated. Just the areas that they say that they're going to go to and do the sweeps, barrio neighborhoods, run-down neighborhoods, and you know, who's there? It's going to be pit bulls. It's going to be the bully breeds. Amps have pit bulls, bullies, you know, it's all the same thing. We all need to be together because BSL affects us all no matter what bloodlines we come from or whether we show, but it's just such a separation sometimes. the American Pit Bull Terrier Club of Southern California. It's a UKC recognized club. UKC show dogs are judged by UKC confirmation standards. AKC is more family oriented, whereas in AKC it's more um, professional handlers. AKC shows a little different, different atmosphere, different people. Um, they're not pit bulls. They consider them AM staff. We have some dogs here that are AM staff that are also registered through the UKC that are known as pit bulls, but AKC won't acknowledge them. Yeah, to me it makes no sense. Same breed, same dog. And in many cases, you know, dual registered, so you could show them in either show. And there are dogs with championships in both organizations. I believe the American Kennel Club wished to distance itself from something as unsavory as uh, dog fighting. And by changing the breed's name, it was something of a symbolic separation. Like when God said, I shall call my nation Israel, or whatever it was that God said. Genetically, there is nothing that was introduced into the American Staffordshire that was not the pit bull. AKC called it that, the dog's a pit bull. We have the ADBA, which is another registry. They go more for the original, fitter, more athletic look. This is Red Jack, and Red Jack is a champion in the American Dog Breeders Association shows. He's got good musculature, a good bite, and he also has some attitude as well as being friendly. 
Good luck. Go get him. Yeah. On your left. Pit Bull is the fighting dog. It's the ultimate fighting dog. And what they're looking to show is that the dog still has the game and it hasn't evolved away from what the dog is supposed to be. And they're not actually allowing their dogs to contact. They're showing that they will and that desire to. So they're just basically showing their dogs are the original type dogs. That's why the weight of the dogs, the style of the dog is not overweighted, and it hasn't evolved away from what the dog is supposed to be. It sounds better, I guess, to the public, American staff to shower. It's the same dog. Just like that big bully thing. It's the same dog. There's different registries that are beginning now, like the ABKC and the BKC. What they're trying to do is implement the bullier style dog. Bullies, you're going for bulk, you're going for size. It's just different standards. It's a lot of fighting amongst the bullies, the confirmation, pit bulls, and the AKC AM staff. There is a difference in culture, but at the same time, you know, we all love our dogs just the same, and the care and the love for the animals is what's important for me. Bully barbecues are just like get-togethers where they'll have shows and everything. They, they'll pick their own judges and stuff, but it's not set up as professional. No point. So if you win that kind of stuff, it's more just like bragging rights. We do, do this like every three months. Everybody comes out like every three months and has fun with the dogs. Everybody gets together, barbecue, everybody participates, chips in. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. We get bad names from people out there fighting their dogs, which is wrong. As you can tell, this line ain't a fighting line. If you see the news, it's all game dogs. It has nothing to do with the dogs that you see out here today. As you can tell out here, they all get along. All the dogs out here get along. They could be near each other and everything. It all depends on what line you have and how you treat your dog. That's the main thing. This is our bloodline. This is our breed. You can see the structure, the body, everything, the heads. We got them. We got grills for your dog, too. And of course, they still are pit bulls, so you do have your accidents here and there, but it's not like it used to be that every dog you see, any cat, anything that moves, basically, they go after. I mean, as you can see here, we have probably close to 100 dogs already. None of them are really acting the way that they used to back then. It would have been blood everywhere by now. I'd much rather have a dog that is dog aggressive than a dog that is people aggressive. I mean, to me, uh, basically, they're like kids. I have a problem with people that try to sugarcoat what they are. Their background comes from a fighting history. They get a hold of something and they're into it. The damage is quick and it's violent and it's, um, it's quite frightening if you're not prepared. When you watch them wrestle in play with one of their playmates, you see why they're the number one fighting breed. I mean, they're good at what they do. They're strong, they're powerful, they're quick, they're agile. Like I said, there doesn't have to be a reason for these dogs to fight. Sometimes it's just the pure love of it, and the game dogs have that very, very strong within them. How many dogs do you estimate in America today? Ballpark figures. 52 million plus. More and more people today are getting dogs specifically for personal protection or home protection or business protection because of the way things are going in society. It's the one thing that's still, in most cities and states, still legal to have. We've been teaching bite prevention classes since 97. We compete in internationally recognized dog sports, Schutzen, French ring sport. So we have learned how to heighten dogs' behaviors in certain drives and also how to neutralize teaching people about something that we do every single day anyway. And I thought it was something that was very much needed. Turn around so she can see the top of his head. And he's got a nice full bite. He's committed. Okay, so does he look pretty locked on? But they don't really lock their jaws, but they're so darn determined and they're so darn strong that it, it looks like it. 
If you have one coming your way, this is another thing about the pit bull. If I go to a yard and there are multiple pit bulls, that's a red flag for me. Because they were bred to be aggressive towards other dogs, if they're not aggressive towards other dogs, I go, hmm. Every situation I've been in where a pit bull did bite somebody, it was side by side with another pit bull dog. Who wants to take a bite? Volunteer? I think a lot of what happens out there in some of these attacks is it's not necessarily the dogs going out hunting for someone to bite. It's what the people do. The people don't even realize that it's their actions and motions um, that often trigger the attacks in the first place. There you go. Good. Good. Yeah, good boy. Oh, his eyes red. Straighten out your arm. Straighten out your arm. The worst thing you can do is run from a dog if it's chasing you. So I think, you know, stand your ground. Equal or greater, never below. Capon coucher. Pas bouger. I've always been involved with animals. It was horses first. And it was my husband who had pit bulls when we were dating. And one thing I wanted to do for sure, because my husband's pit bulls were so out of control and always in trouble, was um, obedience train the dog. That was kind of the beginning of it for me. And it was several years later that I got involved in the protection sports. I'm training him in French simply because I'm competing in French ring sports. Around the house, it's just, hey, get over here. But for a formal training, it's more of the commandos. Capone, tabou. Tabouje. Right now, Capone is the only pit bull in North America to have uh, the French Ring One title. Thank you. Good goal. It's a sport that is dominated by the Belgian Malinois. They were bred for it, and they excel at it. <laughs> Malinois are definitely the premier sport dog. They're fast, they're quick, they're easy learners, they're fun to train, they, they're just really super smart. Bingo! <laughs> Bingo! My love above I just like doing it with them though. I've always liked doing it with the alternate breeds just because people say they can't. I want to show them differently that they can. And it's not because the dogs aren't capable of it. The sport is difficult in the handling aspect. You really have to know the rules. If you say the wrong thing at the wrong time, regardless of what the dog did, zero points. So that can be a little discouraging to some people. I love Capone. He's probably one of my favorite dogs in the world. He's different than anything I've had in the past. He loves to train. He's not the fastest dog. He's not the best ring dog. He tries real hard. He's a good jumper. He's obedient. He's controlled. has an incredibly hard bite and for a lot of us in dog sports the dog's biting style is often taken into consideration it's important to keep in mind with all of these dogs that are doing sport work we don't teach them to bite the dogs already know how to bite we're teaching them the control and when it's appropriate to bite and when it's not the dog's not allowed to bite until the decoy hits the handler if the dog bite hands or feet or faces, they're not uh, welcomed into the sport. So we want dogs that are very clear on the equipment. This is a game. This is like a sparring yes, match. It's not for life or death. Some dogs just cannot stay within the rules, show power and control. They got one or the other, but not both. It's just a place the dog can escort if they want. They just have to guard the guy and be in a position to catch him as quickly as they can when he runs away. It's not necessarily the best place for my dog to be, but um, in his younger days I taught him that, so he has a tendency to revert back to that every now and then. It's kind of a fun spot for him. But it's all right. <laughs> He's my guy. He's my guy. Another thing about the pit bulls, 
You know, I've raised these dogs for 20 years. I've never had one try to bite me. I've had my Malinois snap. I've had Rottweiler snap. I've had Shepherd snap. But the Pipples are stable. Oh, you know, they were once known as the nanny dog because they were so good with children. Powerade, yeah. Some people that do French ring sport, their dogs are also quite efficient at Yummy, personal huh? protection as well. My, my dogs aren't. I didn't get them to protect me. I got them to, to work with and to train and to show. I don't know if he would or not. I like to think he pick. would, but it's not a priority for me. Of course, you, you do have a little bit more element of danger in some of your urban neighborhoods. So those people tend to get a dog to protect their yard. The dogs end up breeding, then they have a litter of, say, eight to ten dogs that they don't know what to do with. What are you going to do? You're going to take that dog to the shelter. You know, or you're going to just, in some cases, turn it loose on the street, which is even worse. If you look in the city shelters now, about 80-90% of the animals are pit bulls. These are not dogs that anybody wants, and they're being euthanized, and that's, that's a huge, huge problem. That's not because they're horrible animals. It's because there's overbreeding, unfortunately, because they do make this presentation of machoism and toughness. They're in the communities where they're less conscious about overbreeding, and so you go into inner cities all around the country and the packs of animals that are running loose are pit bulls. What is one to do with all these dogs? But it's a reality and I see it as more of a situation where it's an opportunity to work with people. Okay, let's get Queenie and then that's, okay. that's the last dog. So what are you live for? Who would you kill for? What would you die for? Some people they don't know. Who would you ride for? How many you cry for? Who you got love for? And wait, open your door. Who would you run with? Catch the case with. Be a cold D with. Either one of you say itch. Who would you be real to? Be a true friend to? Who can you trust in this world besides you? Who would you run with? Catch a new case with. Be a cold D with. Either one of you say itch. Who would you be real to? Be a true friend to? Who can you trust in this world besides you? Downtown Dog Rescue is set up to primarily help very low income people, get their dogs spayed, neutered, licensed, and then we serve basically as a safety net for the dog. If the dog ends up in the shelter, we come and get the dog so we can find the owner or determine if the owner is even going to be able to take the dog back. We host spay and neuter events. We have trainers, we have dog food, we have resources, educating them a little bit and giving them information on how to incorporate the dog more into their family. Instead of focusing on, yeah, they're big, bad dogs, and that can be cool and everything, but they also are just great companions, but they need to be spayed and neutered because there's too many pit bulls. I just think, I think it's kind of messed up for people to try to mandatorily make somebody spayed and neuter their dog. But if you give the people the information to where they come and get their dog spayed and neutered, we can help kind of calm the excess of stray dogs in the neighborhoods. And that's where, you know, the breeze is getting real hit hard now is in the inner city. Because you can, you can buy them from backyard breeders for 50 to to $100. Say, oh, I got a pit bull, let me breed Crazy Joe's dog around the corner to my badass bitch. And uh, we're going to have some crazy ass puppies, you know what I mean? And it's mantra to own a pit bull. They had rap songs about pit bulls, rap videos, you see them in magazines. Everything you see now, a pit bull, pit bull. All right, if this is a subtle neighborhood, then predominantly the people that live in that subtle neighborhood would want to have a subtle dog. If it's an aggressive neighborhood, then everybody want a tough dog. Don't nobody want no dog that's no punk. You walking down the street, somebody ch come try to snatch your purse, you're going to be like, hey, you know what I mean? I got my dog with me. Hey, you better go get him. Everybody wants that dog to be a protector, but they're not taking the time out to train him the way that he's supposed to be. I got a gun on knife in my pocket, expecting something to happen. But I do want to be prepared for it. Let me go get my gun. Jeff is going to get his gun. Master Canine is a club that I want to help other people train their dogs. If a person wanted to buy a protection train pit, me personally, I wouldn't really advise it. You know, we have a lot of trainers out here that's not training that dog the proper way. To teach the dog the proper way, you can't do it in a year. Drop him right there. 
dropping. You know, it, it just takes, you know, two or three years to get a properly trained Texan dog. Stay. Having a biting dog and, and don't have the obedience in it that you should, to me, that's not a protection dog. Gator is a pit bull pup. He's probably about a year old. Gator has a bad attitude. He hasn't been socialized. Take him out there and walk him around a little bit. He's dog aggressive. He's people aggressive. He's a beautiful dog. He just has a bad attitude. Really, he's a danger. Today, we're going to try to calm him down a little bit. You know, if you see something like that and you have a chance to correct it, it's a fun thing to do, you know, to me. No, no. Okay, all right, let's uh, bring him over here. Oh, uh, we're not making him mean. No, uh, no, We're taking it, trying to take it from him. Right, 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 right. No. No. <laughs> Walk in again, all right. Heel! Heel! No, man. No! 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 Well, then I told you it was a problem? <laughs> no! 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 He could have been on a chain all his life with his puppyhood. He could have been uh, agitated from people as a puppy coming up, you know, facing them off, having people teasing. The main thing is that he wasn't socialized. He wasn't allowed to be a puppy. I don't think it's bad blood because Archie has his sister too, and, and she's not like this. So uh, to me, it kind of looks like a, a, a human era. You know, I don't, I don't blame it on the dog. I blame it on Good the person boy, not man. socializing the dog enough Good or boy. taking him out, exposing him to different things Good at a young boy, age. Gator. And Good Arch boy. just got him Good not boy, too long ago. He, is, <laughs> he did not Good raise boy. him from a pup. Let's do it one more time, Arch. And then take him off and play with him. You have to keep doing this and keep doing this till he realizes that the person is not a threat to him. You know, and as it goes on, I'll find out what he really likes doing, and I'll start having a little fun with him. But right now, the thing is for me to get close to him. A pit bull, he is the warrior of all dogs. But if you socialize him, then he's just like any other dog. You're supposed to raise a dog as, a, as part of your family. And if you can't do that, then you don't need him. You can't be 90% committed and own a pit bull their needs, what's required, all of it is so much more than owning a regular dog. I love training other people's pit bulls. The style that I'm comfortable with is a Buddhist approach as opposed to a Christian approach. A Christian approach would be about behavior equals consequence. If you do this, you get this. If you don't, then you'll have to experience this pain. Karma dog training, it's about the process used. The process literally becomes the goal. So the process is the goal in every moment. With pit bulls, much more so than other dogs, I immediately have a bond with them. I don't know why. For whatever reason, I just come in and I feel like the love that I have for the dogs, I guess, it comes across and the dogs immediately feel loved. Now, just because I believe in karma, I'm not against regulations for pit bull owners, people who want to own powerful breeds. I think it's very irresponsible to just hand over the keys to a pit bull. The consequences are too drastic. It's because they were bred to fight other dogs. Now, when a, when a pit bull attacks a human being, to me, that's totally unnatural. You have someone who bred it as a killing machine, which is totally not their nature. They, they're better with people than any breed I know. Now, towards other dogs, that is a completely different story. 
that's when all of the training and all of the management and all of the attention to detail really plays in when you're talking about a pit bull with another dog. And that's part of the huge responsibility. This is where the problem comes in. We're talking about the pit bull now. This dog ends up in the pound. A rescuer or someone with a bleeding heart, they see this dog and they say, wow, look at him, he's so sweet. Let's adopt him. There are too many rescue organizations out there that shouldn't be rescuing this breed. They don't know the breed. They don't understand him. They don't recognize him. I think a lot of people are adopting the bully breeds because, you know, they just want to save something that's in need. You know, if I'm doing a home inspection for somebody that's interested in a, in a pit bull, first of all, they, they need to be a homeowner. They would need to have a secure fence and also a kennel with a top and a bottom. Other dogs would need a place to be also if you're going to have multiple dogs. I think when people first enter, they kind of assume that I have very vicious dogs. And so this is why I have security gates up in the house. But the reality is I became a little nuts and I rescued a fourth dog. Umpa, my red-nosed pit bull who was being groomed for dog fighting, I kind of just brought him in the house, threw him into my little pack, and kind of thought that everything was going to be okay. And it wasn't. The two males started trying to um, figure out who was going to be on top. And three fights have already broken out. So to prevent any more fights from happening, we had the security gates, both my daughter and I, made sure that we're going to be safe and they're going to be safe and on top of that they go through training every week. People who own pit bulls, the reason they don't want any other breed than a pit bull is because they literally feel like they're so human-like. I don't think they're a problem dogs. I think there are owners who need a better education but then you attach the reputation specifically because he's a pit bull. People will freak out. It sounds like a pit bull is a bad word. It should be banned or we should make a PC word for a pit bull. So my PC version is calling her an American Staffordshire. So when people ask, hey, what kind of dog do you have? I say she's American Staffordshire Terrier. So people are like, oh. But if I say she's a pit bull, then you're like, oh. So it all depends on how you uh, word it. I decided to get a pit bull because they have such a bad reputation, even though a hundred years ago they used to be the number one family dog. They have such a high pain threshold that kids could ride them and pull their tails and poke their eyes and, and the dog was neutral so that it, it just didn't matter. I belong to an organization called Love and Four Paws and we provide hospitals with animal assisted therapy. It's all a matter of training. These dogs are trained to be gentle and they're bred to be gentle. But pit bulls in general are not mean dogs. We have dogs that visit every child in the hospital at least three times a week for comfort visitations at the bedside. And they're all very gentle and very kind and very well trained to work with hospitalized children. These children had major surgeries. They've been having a lot of pain. And a dog that is just a little bit more comfortable with just letting the child sit there and pet it, touch their ears, pull on their tails, kiss them, hug them, are the best for this. When people think of pit bulls, all kinds of things come to their mind drug dealers, they think of people that are fighting the dogs, but now by any means they're actually bred for temperament to be a loyal you know, family pet. What I found interesting about this breed is that you can go to these barbecues at the parks, you can go to these dog shows, you can go to weight pooling shows, and when you look around you see whites, Hispanics, blacks, Asians, and they're talking, they're laughing, and they're all there because of the breed. The modern day urban youth see this dog and, oh, this is my dog of pride. This is my dog it, of pride. To him, it's a toy. How else is a dog going to play? Can't exactly grab a Game Boy, can he? <laughs> we keep our dogs tame and nice, and uh, I don't want anything getting a hold of my boy. Some of these bully events that we're having, there's people bringing dogs out there that are acting aggressive. I don't think those dogs should be allowed to be at any shows. I don't think they should be allowed to be brought in public at all. And I, I think on some levels, maybe that dog shouldn't even be alive. If you had a UKC show and you face a dog off, you out. The pit bull has different aspects and the modern day man doesn't change the aspects of the pit bull. 
the new thing with the bully people is getting bigger bone, bigger head. Only way you're going to get that overemphasized head on the pit bull is you got to go out of the pit bull strands. They look ferocious. They're scary looking dogs. A lot of characters want these dogs just for appearance. If a dog could be bling, then that's what you're saying, is a dog that has turned into a piece of jewelry. Any breed of dog, not just ours, when they start breeding for specifics, specific size, specific color, specific heads, I'm afraid we're missing the point and we're not looking at the things that really matter. Well, my question is, can that dog work? Can he go out there and work? Can he weight pull? No matter how big he is, can he pull? This dog was never bred to be in the inner city. It was bred to be in the country working. This is a working breed. We're getting up to the 100 pound class and traditionally the 100 pound class and the 125 pound class will pull the maximum weights in the whole entire fold. So right now you see the dogs that uh, well, should pull up in uh, 4,000 pounds plus. My wife and I, we post about seven pulls per year. We were just out in Kansas for a poll. Next month we're going to be going out to Colorado for a big poll. We'll be going to England in May. My big boy Johnny will be coming out in 125 pound class. He weighs 114 pounds, so we'll be pulling him after the 100 pound class is done. Johnny is registered ADBA, and then my American Bulldogs are registered ABA, American Bulldog Association. To poll with the polling organizations, they're open to all breeds, so your dogs don't have to be registered. Every dog that's a good puller can pull with the IWPA or the UPF, the United Polling Federation. So that way you get the cream of the crop, you're going against the best that there is, period. up and he breaches pulling. Later you get a pass or pull ISIS. Pass. ISIS passes. Okay. Dogs had always been a hobby of mine my whole life. I finally settled in with the American Bulldogs when I got involved with weight pulling. So my primary dogs are my American Bulldogs, but I've got my one big special boy Johnny here. Temperament wise they're real close. My American Bulldogs carry a little bit more muscle than these guys do. And what this one lacks in a little bit of muscle my American Bulldogs have, he makes up for it with his tenacity and his willingness to please me. Come on, sir, pull. Sir. Sir. Come on. Sir. If it gets heavy for an American Bulldog, he'll tell you it's heavy and he'll stop. This guy, he won't stop. And so I'll, I'll stop him when I know that it's time for him to stop pulling. Like I said, if I'm judging, if I see a dog is obviously hurting, I'll stop it and I'll say it's over. I'd rather have a handler get mad at me than to see a dog be injured. Work, Johnny, work. My big boy Johnny, he weighs 114 pounds. He's two years old now. He's not quite fully matured. This year, though, pulling-wise, he'll be coming into his own. This pull is kind of a tune-up for him, and then comes January. We'll see how he stacks up against the best in the world. There's very few of these big guys out there. They're just line bred specifically for weight pulling. People think they're a mean breed. No, he's so darn friendly that if somebody came up and sweet talked him, he'd probably just hop in their truck and go with him. Johnny knows what he's gonna do. He's got his he's got his pulling clothes on and he's anxious to get going. <laughs> These guys just love to go out and pull. <laughs> Work, 
Johnny. Work, Johnny. Work. Work, Johnny. Good boy, Johnny. Work. Come on, Johnny. Work. Work, Johnny. Good boy. There you go. Good boy. Work it, Johnny. Work it. Work, Johnny. Right here, Johnny. Work, Johnny. Work, Johnny. Work, Johnny. Work, Johnny. Good boy, Johnny. Work it, Johnny. Work it, Johnny. Work it, Johnny. Work it, Johnny. This is the most ever these he's pulled. The 4780. Give him a month or two and he's ready. I'd say right now he's just a click off the two top dogs are. I know. Uh, to go to Colorado next month, yeah. I've had to file for papers to give me a 24 hour pass to have my dog in and out of the city of Denver. And, uh, and once my pass is expired, it's illegal for me to have this dog at the place where they're going to have the pull. The breed specific legislation does frighten me. It's just based on what a few bad eggs do to them and a, and a perception that's really, as far as I'm concerned, has been painted in the press by what these dogs are because uh, it's totally against their nature to be aggressive to a human being. It's just not in their blood. It has to be put into them. There's a lot of hard work goes into making one of these guys bad. I think with this bay neuter and the legislation in other areas and in Europe, they're not allowed in Germany at all anymore. I think that they're trying to extinguish them slowly but surely. Banning the breed I don't think is right. I'd rather see the counties and cities require anybody that's going to own a pit bull to obtain a license and maybe just be held to a kind of a higher standard to own one of those types of dogs. I think that's smart. They are an exceptional animal, but even if we had to get a, a rare exotic license to have them, I'd do that. I'd, I'd be happy with that. It's the owners, how you raise the dog, how you bring up the dog, how you train the dog, is how the dog is going to act. I think that what they should do is a lot more careful screening of who owns this animal and hold them to being the responsible caretaker of the pig. There's an extra responsibility involved. All of these animals need people as guardians who understand about how to raise an animal that is potentially dangerous. You have to do your homework on your dog before you get the dog and learn the proper techniques to have a breed like this. And even with training and even with socializing and all that good stuff, you're silly to ever think you can trust these guys not to fight. That's the nature of the beast. And if you have a problem with it, you probably shouldn't have them. They're being overbred to the point that they're filling up shelters. And whereas you can usually house three or four dogs in a large kennel, a lot of these dogs are dog friendly. They have to be caged separately. So when you see 60% of a dog population in a shelter being pit bulls, you have to at the same time go, my God, what are they having to do with all these other dogs that they're trying to find homes for? If we don't take responsibility and somehow curb the numbers, the breed will be taken out of society. It's the people. It's not the dog.